Okay, right. we're back here live at HP Discover in Frankfurt, Germany. This is theCUBE, our coverage, exclusive coverage of HP Discover for, the, for two days live and to get all the action, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon and we're here with Chuck Smith, who's the Vice President of Blade System and uh, Business Planning for ISS uh, and Software at HP. Chuck, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks guys, appreciate it. <laughs> uh, big event for you guys, uh, about, about the same size as, as the one in Las Vegas, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, actually, yeah, actually a little is bit it, more. Is it a little yeah, bit yeah, bigger? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, around so, 9,000, so you guys reach close to 20,000 in these two events. That's right. Uh, over that's a span right. of six months. You just announced next year it's going to be in Barcelona. So uh, one of the things that we've been covering, obviously that's come out of the first day and then the first half of this day, is obviously big data is native across all of HP. You're seeing right. the big data um, seeds being planted, whether it's autonomy, a little bit of HP lab stuff here, you got Vertica, and a variety of other software is creeping into all the little nooks and crannies of HP and system software services. So big data, obviously the big theme. Yep. On the compute and infrastructure side, you have the converged infrastructure modernizing with flash, you know, the new storage stuff. Right. And really the key thing that we're seeing is this software-led infrastructure vision. Um, Wikibon just posted a um, groundbreaking research report, first of its kind, modernizing the converged infrastructure definition um, called software-led infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So Dave Donatelli was up on stage and he, I mean, he, he might have known her, not, not known, but he has lightning in a bottle because he <laughs> said HP is delivering and shipping software-defined networking, yep. software-defined servers, yep. and software-defined storage. That's right. In all three categories, it's a triple threat. No one can claim that right now in the industry. That's true. So, I want to ask you, what is software-defined servers? Because you guys have announced Moonshot, which we covered. Right. You've announced Gen 8 uh, in Vegas. Uh, we covered that with video. So, we know that's going on. The compute side is getting faster, 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 but software is being abstracted out as the key differentiator, making it all work. So, yeah, more cores are coming, power efficient, all that's great. So, give us the update. So, Hardware's not going away, right. but software still is the focus. We call it software-led infrastructure. So tell us, what's the, what is software-led servers? Well, I think that you know, uh, one of the key things that, that Dave spoke to is, you know, when you think about Project Moonshot, one of the key elements, even in the hardware game, is ensuring that you've got the right compute infrastructure to support those applications. And we see with uh, cloud-enabled data centers, public cloud, and so on, a dramatic shift in the requirements. And so what, what Dave's talking about is, and what, what we're delivering on, and you'll see us roll out over the course of the next you know, 12, 24 months, is continuing to support that from a, a software-led server design. So Project Moonshot, we actually have the ability to tune cartridges, if you will, to support specific application footprints. In another, if you will, approach, we've been shipping cloud system for three years, and cloud system actually allows us to deliver on a cloud-based architecture for infrastructure as a service all the way up to the application. So you can then take, if you will, um, resource pools. Bring Two together. years cloud system? Three years, yeah, Three 2009. Years? We actually announced it at uh, Discover in Berlin in 09. Um, and uh, it's like a little more, April of 09. So um, we, we actually have the ability to, to take those abstracted compute, storage, and networking resource pools, bring that together, with our cloud maps and essentially deliver that application. So essentially defining, if you will, the logic or the software to provision the server or the service. So that's kind of a, a couple of ways we're coming at it, so depending on the requirement. So quick follow up on the cloud maps. Yeah. Can you take that intelligence and embed it over time in, into the systems um, and, and actually proactively act on that data? Yeah, I mean, so Cloud Maps for us is really a, a template for what that infrastructure and application needs to be to, to, to optimize for an app, for a, you know, a customer in the enterprise, or for that matter, a service provider, or what have you. What we do have the ability to do is store that, if you will, that logic of how that, that uh, 
infrastructure and application comes together and then manage it over the life cycle. So we certainly do have that intelligence to not just deploy it and provision it and set and forget. Static, right. But yeah, but no, absolutely manage it over the life cycle and adjust to resource requirements, changes in, in the, uh, um, the elements associated with the application, all sorts of things, so yeah, absolutely. And that adjustment is obviously fully automated, right? Or That's right. Largely automated. That's right, I mean, of course, you know, you, you've got to do the implementation correctly, it's, it's, a, it's a based on um, a, a combination of what we're doing within the enterprise group and with our software group, so a lot of what Meg talked about was bringing together the, the infrastructure elements and the software together to deliver converged cloud. How is HP um, addressing the notion of the solution sales versus the traditional box sales? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think I think that. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, the, as you said, the hardware is not going away, so we have to have have to have folks that really understand where our differentiation is and understand how we bring these things together. Um, what we're trying to do is focus them on key solutions that deliver value from a converged infrastructure perspective. So whether it be blades or the, the recent storage announcements, um, the work that we're doing in, in software-defined networking have really um, clearly specified goals and target um, hardware elements in the converged infrastructure that makes it easy for our customers to understand, makes it easy for our partners to understand what to sell, and from our sales teams to bring it together. It's a bit of a journey, so you know, we, with uh, you know, an, an infrastructure sales team and bringing them up, that's, that's what we continuously work on. But if you look at our success, I mean, we, we are the, the blade leader and have been for well over five years, um, and we've shipped over three million uh, blade okay, servers. We, we've got a significant amount of, uh, of uh, differentiation there, um, and really is the platform for converged infrastructure. So um, we've been quite successful. You've touched on it, but I wonder if you could summarize that differentiation. I mean, how do sure, you guys? Sure, sure. I mean, if you look at it, what, what we try and talk about is that we, we have, you know, and it's linked to our, our value proposition associated with Gen 8, the intelligence associated with provisioning and managing the, the firmware and the change over the life cycle. The, the sheer capex costs associated with buying blades up front, you, your break even is somewhere between, you know, zero and six servers. Um, the, the connectivity, the work that we've done with our storage team, um, the flat sand, where we actually directly connect into a, into a, a, a storage area network. Um, that takes out costs, improves latency, takes out management overhead. Um, so those are just some quick examples. Uh, Virtual Connect is our technology to connect servers to networks, um, and that's been very successful. Over seven and a half million ports out in the industry, and really changing the way in which you know, people connect you know, the server to the network. So Gen 8's been out for a while, yeah. and um, one of the value propositions of Gen 8 is you're going to attack these mundane tasks, mm -hmm. right? We all know mm -hmm. that we have a, a very overly intensive IT labor component, mm -hmm. uh, especially mm -hmm. in, when it comes to managing servers. Yeah. Um, do you have data, and proof points, that suggest that you've actually been able to attack that problem? Yeah, no, we have significant data. I mean, it's in, in a lot of the marketing and literature we put out in the public domain, but just some examples. I mean, we've been able to improve the, the update time frame um, by 3x uh, from both our competition and our previous generation. So compressing that time Compressing frame, yeah. that time frame, absolutely. Um, another key element is also over the course of the life cycle is supporting the infrastructure. And we've actually created the ability to diagnose and manage and capture information um, on, a, on an ongoing real-time basis. And so then if you run into a, a situation where um, you've got a server failure or a component failure, we can actually rapidly diagnose that, we can actually phone that home to our services folks or a channel partner, and we can actually dispatch the appropriate part very quickly. And it, we, we've shown that we can actually improve the response time and, and essentially coming back up to production by 66% faster. So, these are just you know, quick elements in terms of what we can you yeah. know, do with Gen 8 that nobody else can do. Chuck, I want to talk about uh, um, a concept that's being kicked around. We were just at Oracle Open World recently and all the events we've been bringing the Cube to. So you get to hear all the, the rhetoric from the, some of the software guys trying to be hardware, yep. uh, Oracle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we like to give Oracle a kick once in a while. Well, all the time, but because uh, they're in the <laughs> hardware game. I mean, they're trying to be like HP, let's face it. Larry yeah. wants to be like HP. Yeah. Um, but you know, obviously they have Oracle software. Yeah. The big conversation at Oracle, SAP, and even your partners is workloads, yeah. right? So yeah. one of the things that's really impressive about what we heard at Gen 8 and um, Moonshot is tunability. Yeah. 
Yeah. Talk about that going on, because the power and cooling stuff, that's whole, that energy stuff, that's a different conversation, very, very cool, yeah. Um, yeah. Different, different conversation, but people want to manage their workloads, they're deploying virtualization, you got all kinds of different requirements now for mobile and cloud, uh, workloads are changing, mm -hmm. you still have that SLA, that enterprise grade, mm -hmm. uh, workload specific hardware. In the old days, you stack and rack, I got rack for this, I got a rack for that, now you got virtual machines, and um, the, this tunability becomes a big deal. Yeah. So talk about what you're seeing relative to the notion of, I got some infrastructure, I want to build it up, stand up this infrastructure, but I want it to be flexible and agile from a workload perspective. Right, right. Well, so I, I think a perfect example of what we're doing there, we just recently announced a product called the SL4500, and back to your, your question on big data, it's a perfect example. Um, you know, depending on whether it's a Hadoop cluster or an exchange server or you know, uh, uh, something else, you really have a wide, if you will, range of workload requirements. And one of the things that we've done is create, uh, within our smart storage strategy, um, caching algorithms that actually allow you to adjust the cache that's used on board relative to the, 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 um, the solid state drive and give you the ability to tune to the requirements of that application either more or less and actually accelerate it. And so we, we demonstrated that on stage yesterday with uh, Mark Potter's introduction of that product um, and we were actually able to show a dramatic improvement in terms of the, if you will, transactions per second or the performance profile based on our ability to capture the, if you will, the, the workload parameters and then adjust cache to meet that. So that's a great example of how we're doing that. And you'll see us extend that out to the, to the storage host and, and really create a, you know, a broader view of how that's handled. So yeah, and we're very seeing, exciting. We're seeing also with that tunability is that purpose-built hardware mm -hmm. or purpose-built solutions are, are, we call it the tailored suit model. Yeah, yeah. You tailor a suit, you wear it all the time, right. but it only fits that one, <laughs> your one size. Um, like we were talking off camera about VCE, that's on the high end to really bring that kind of capability in. What do you think about that, those conversations when people say purpose-built uh, solutions around hardware? Because you've got hardware and software. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, we can argue whether the, the VC elements are, are purpose-built or, or generalized infrastructure, but what we see, you know, for example, cloud system, we see as purpose-built for delivering a, a public or hybrid cloud into an enterprise. Um, it's very flexible in the ability to handle you know, a wide range of, of applications within that, given the cloud maps and what we talked about. Um, we also see kind of a, a, another trend with, and, and this is what uh, Project Moonshot really looks to address. You look at some of these public cloud providers that have relatively homogeneous application profile, but deployed at scale, that's where purpose-built hardware starts to get very interesting because you then have a very, very, if you will, deterministic tiered stack that the hardware can address. And so there, there's sort of two things going on in the enterprise, heterogeneous applications, um, you know, a need to be much more flexible, um, and then these public cloud providers which have really a different yeah. um, orientation. So, yeah, so say big data for example, like yeah. if I want to have density, I need a lot of servers with a lot of RAM. I might not need a lot of storage, so I'm going to need maybe having different configurations. Right, so I mean if you look at our, our SL4500 that I talked about, we actually have a one by 60, so you got one compute with 60 drives, really perfect for an open stack implementation or if you will a base level cloud, all the way over to a three by 15, which is much more compute intensive, less drive intensive for things like Hadoop and so on. So it just depends on, and we actually have that configurability. So do you see, the do you, if I follow up on that, do you see things like Moonshot eventually fitting into that type of architecture? I, know, I mean, I know it's early days and not yeah, really shipping. Yeah, it. and I mean, so what, if you think about Moonshot, even, even so, you, you actually have, we have this, this concept of a cartridge. So now yeah. we can actually have a cartridge that has you know, memory intensive mm -hmm. or multiple cores, single core with more storage, depending on what that application is. And that's really what Dave was getting at in terms of software-defined servers. The software's driving that purpose-built design, but we built an architecture to be flexible around what the software requirements are. I wonder if we can stay on competition a little bit. Um, so, uh, you know, you've seen Oracle get into this market, uh, you know, as a, yep. they used to be a partner in another. They're another, certainly talking about it, yeah. Another competitor. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they, you know, Exadata is, yeah. you know, it's yeah. converged infrastructure, right? Yeah. I mean, they're, yeah. they're selling them. Yeah. How, uh, so let's go down the list. I mean, what's your, what's your bumper sticker on how you differentiate, how you compete? Well, certainly we, you know, we look at, um, you know, for Oracle, for example, I mean, if you look at some of the, the performance benchmarks, you look at some of the, the capabilities that we have with our converged infrastructure, um, we actually, if you will, outperform Oracle on Oracle, um, and, and we can show those benchmarks. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I think one of the one of the tenets of the of the purpose-built infrastructure is you actually got to be better somehow. 
and when we're better with our converged infrastructure than they are on their own stack, that makes a pretty an interesting discussion with customers. So, you're great. Um, uh, so that's cool, and then IBM made a big entrance in the market. I mean, it's, 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 it's blade uh, business was hurting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they've essentially replaced the, the blade business with, with a pure line. Yeah. Um, impressive uh, marketing, for sure. Yeah. Uh, you're smirking, but, but okay. <laughs> well, no, I, and, then, and then this whole thing about patterns, embedding yeah, knowledge yeah. in there. So that sounds good, it's IBM. You know, they're big yeah, and I, global. I, I, so I look at this and what I- What do you see I, there? Well, when I see that, I, I, I look at the, the peer system and what we've looked at in terms of just the base level infrastructure, where they are with the, if you will, the, the fabric and how, how far we believe they can go, what they're, what they're launching in terms of the infrastructure. We still believe we've got a better mousetrap, you know, the differentiating items we talked about. We see patterns as being very similar to what we're doing with cloud maps. So we believe we've got an extensive lead there in terms of, if you will, patterning or, or having it, if you will, um, you know, a topology for deploying applications and having it very well scripted, best practices and so on. So we're, we're doing good there. So kind of more of the same, the, the devil yeah. you know, and yeah. you know how to compete against that. Yeah. And then, and then uh, we talked a little bit about VCE and you're saying you can argue whether or not it's truly well, I mean, right? I, I look at the, the public financials and I kind of scratch my head a bit. I, I do see them very aggressive. Um, we see it, it primarily EMC centric. Um, we, I think, you know, with the advent of FlexPod and some of these other pieces with Cisco, there seems to be a breaking ranks a little bit. And so we're, we're wondering whether the consortium itself, you know, has legs. The flip side is, is that we, we, we believe with our um, cloud system, um, and the plat platforms that we have are much more flexible. We give customers choice. You can start low and, and build up. Um, you can leverage your own uh, uh, infrastructure that you already have, so we can actually deploy a cloud system in an existing Blade environment. Um, we can connect to other people's infrastructure, which customers require, so it's heterogeneous, not a lock-in. So there's a variety of things that we think we differentiate. Uh, relative I mean, to. the converged infrastructure place it used to be lonely. You know, for you guys. Now everybody's in on Dell, of That's course, right. is well, also. That's right, well, you know, it's the right? finest so, form of flattery. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so Chuck, my final question, we're getting the yeah. breaks on here, but yeah. you know, this is a great conversation. We're going to give you a use case. So, um, you guys have a great footprint on the enterprise, but just, I was talking to a few uh, folks, and the startups that grow really fast, like the Pinterest of the world, they start out buying commodity, um, not commodity, yeah, com we'll call it commodity, not industry standard. You know, they, they make their own boxes, they do a prototype, and all of a sudden, they need to scale out really fast. So mm -hmm. the use case is a big data startup yeah. builds a couple node cluster, um, they build their own boxes, and all of a sudden, they got to just grow like crazy. So yeah. here's the use case. They need maximum boxes with an unbelievable amount of RAM, yeah and as many cores as possible, with disk being kind of in there, but maybe put a different disk system in there, but they need to ramp up as fast as possible and build the biggest infrastructure for that spec. Ton of RAM yep. and a ton of cores. Yep. What does HP offer that? Is it a moonshot? Is it different servers? What is the ideal uh, solution for that kind of use case? That it's, seems to be like the Hadoop use case. Yeah, no, we, we actually see, um, I mean there's a variety of answers depending on actually how they're using Hadoop. We, we actually see that the, the SL4500 platform being that, that really purpose built for um, that Hadoop cluster, you can, you can um, scale them and add them you know, um, together so you, you actually have a, a quite a capable platform. So we're very excited about that. Um, we think ultimately that- It's that RAM intensive? Yeah, it can be. That's why I said we've got a variety of, of configurations, but yes, it is. Um, and and uh, you, know, you can actually start to incorporate the disk caching to create a much, much more accelerated workload as well, which is interesting from a Hadoop perspective. So yes. that would be our, our pick um, to, uh, to deliver Hadoop and big data, um, but it's not the only one. We think, actually think that for specific uh, um, uh, deployments, for example, Memcache and so on, that Moonshot actually has a very interesting um, architecture. So it, it really just depends on, again, the software and, and what we, you're trying we, to get We actually at, think so. the Moonshot was actually the purpose-built god box for big data. Because the way the, the amount of service you can put into it, um, it's just amazing. So power, we, yeah. I mean, power yeah. obviously. Yeah, I think that that's, that's true, but what we see is a, 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 in some cases a requirement for fairly uh, large data sets. So I mean, we can go up to 180 terabytes in the box um, with, the, with the large form Disc factor drive. 
it's disk, but it can be a, a mix of, of SSD mm -hmm. and and uh, and spinning media. So you could actually have that combination. Which one, Moonbox or the SL? That's actually the SL45. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. You know. So that's what, more versatile, more flexible. It is, it, and it's it, and it actually is not shipping yet, is it? Uh, we we actually have have it at selected customers um, yeah, shipping in production. No, right? I mean, What's that? Generally, generally, generally available. available. Generally not not generally available. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but okay. lots of lots of conversation. Hey guys, thanks a lot. Hey Chuck, Chuck uh, is with the servers, and obviously, you know, <laughs> if you like hardware, man, hardware's not going away. But as we said in our blog post, it's the software and the hardware. Hardware's a great delivery mechanism, as Dave Donatelli says, and you guys are converging it all together. Software-led infrastructure, software-led um, infrastructure is the hottest area. And you guys got the software-defined uh, server storage and networking. Uh, congratulations! Thanks for being on the cube. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks, guys.